Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the CSUN Geography Department with another video tutorial for you. This tutorial is designed to help students learn to join data from two separate sources that have a common identifier. In this case, the common identifier is census tract. And at the moment, I have uh, the data that you can practice with already downloaded. Some of the data is EPA data. Over here we have census data and then the census tract ID is buried sort of in this larger ID and then there's ethnicity data as well. And so we may not want all of this data but we want to combine the two together. They're from two different sources. We're going to use a merge tool which has um, some advantages over the other. So what we're going to do here is I know where this data is, is housed. It's in my download folder. And what I'm going to do is we're going to start by pressing Control in or File New. We're going to open up a blank workbook. OK, so here we are with our blank workbook. And what we're going to do is first uh, give it a name so file save as and I'll just save it to my desktop and I'm going to call this EPA census merge because we're going to merge data from the EPA to the census save click on the data tab click on get data notice that you can get data from a text or CSV file uh, from the web from actually uh, tables or ranges within a single file. But I think this makes sense to just get it uh, through this tool, get data, and go to a file. And that way, if we had two separate files, you would see how that could be done. We have both of the, the data sets that we want to work with in a single file, just for simplicity's sake. So I want to click on this from workbook and it's going to look well first here on the desktop but my, my file is in the download folder and it was California LA County EPA census joint data so I'm going to click on that and then click on import button it's going to make the connection it's going to read the two files so the first of the two files that we will uh, connect to is EPA data so I'm going to click on that to select it and I'm going to click on transform data button okay so this power query editor uh, appears and it gives us some options for what and how we want to import data from our other Excel file or if you're importing it from the web or some other database. The first thing you'll notice is that the row one data is acting like data and it should be up here in the column header instead. So we want to click on use first row as headers, this button here, and it eliminates row one data and puts it in the header. There are other things that we need to take care of as well and we can do that with this tool. If you scroll to the right you will see that columns 12 through 17 are not things that we want. Um, they were blank columns in the Excel file and this is common to find this. So you can press um, hit uh, column 12 there click on the column header and if you hold the sh control button down you can select multiple columns at the same time and we want to then select remove columns to get rid of those it's a little tidier now easier to work with the next thing that we want to do is to um, note that the zip code column and the census tract column are both functioning 
as numeric values. You see that it has a 1, 2, 3 there instead of an A, B, C. But both of those columns of data should be acting as not as numbers but as codes because of course you can't add up zip codes or get an average zip code. It doesn't make sense. So click on the word zip trans and select the data type options select text and that will move it to the left. This is particularly important to do this if you're working with data from Massachusetts where their zip codes begin with uh, multiple zeros. Luckily here in California our zip codes do not begin with zero but nine and so that transition is easy. Census tract is harder because our census tract should all begin with zero six and you see that we're missing that leading zero in this instance. And so the first thing we will do is to do what we did with the zip code. We'll select census tract and click on the data type and change it to text. Sometimes that alone will add that leading zero back if it was in the original data and was mistakenly entered or imported in this case as a numeric value when it was a text value in the original source. That didn't fix it, so we'll have to do one other small trick in order to add an extra zero. So in order to add the leading zero, we're going to click on the Add Column tab, and we're going to click Format and Add Prefix. So what this will do is to add a leading zero to the, the values in column A or census tract column. Selected that, just type a zero, sort of like the concatenate tool, and press OK. And now we have a new column here that says prefix. Right click on that, the word prefix, and let's rename the column something more logical like tract ID and there we go um, this is ready and we can then click once again on home close and load and it takes a moment but our data comes in including the tract ID column that has a count and it is uh, the useful one. The next step in this process is to um, click the Get Data button to bring the other set of data in. Again, it's in the LA County EPA Census Join data, but this time rather than the EPA data, we're going to bring in the census data. So click on Census Data and Transform Data button. Again, the Power Query editor will open. And this data is in pretty good shape. We can scroll over here and see that uh, there's no extraneous columns of data. The only problem that we have uh, is that this ID column here has um, extraneous or extra data that we don't need. And so like the text column tool, there's a, a different tool here in the Power Query editor, editor called Split Column. So click on that and choose By Delimiter. So we don't want to break it up based on commas. We want to break it up using the S, the letter S. After the US, then the um, census ID is just right. So we're going to click on Custom. And we're only split it at the rightmost delimiter. And type in a nice capital S there. And click OK. And we see that we're broken into two columns now. The first one, we don't need this anymore, and the second one is showing up as numeric value. And again, this is a problem, but when we click on ID2 
and switch it from whole number to text, choose replace current, that leading zero reappears and that's exactly what we want. We're going to re right click here and um, rename the column from ID2 to, to something like tracked ID and we don't need this first column so we can click on it and remove it and we don't need the geographic area name as well and we can remove that column. So we now have total population, Hispanic, Latino, all of this stuff and we can choose close and load and now we have um, sheet 3 we can rename to census and sheet 2 has EPA data. Alright so here on sheet 1 we'll click data and once again click get data and this time we're going to select combine queries and we want to merge the two queries that we have already done. Select EPA first, scroll to the right, find tracked ID, the one with the leading zero, highlight it, and then census data in the bottom um, and select tracked ID. So what we're telling the software is that this column and this column should match and click OK. We see our our data uh, the census tract over here and then the only little tricky part is to click this little button which expands the data from that that is matching from the census data so click on that and then you can just uh, select all that you want maybe you don't want everything um, uh, you don't perhaps need tracked ID a second time so you could do that and I don't know maybe you don't want one or more of these columns but I think we'll just leave them and click OK and they will import. We see that there's a few uh, null variables here and those are the ones that don't match and we can close and load we scroll over here um, we see that there's a lot of uh, data that doesn't match and that's because they're not in Los Angeles County so the last thing that we want to do is just click uh, the California County filter option click off select all scroll down until we find Los Angeles County and click OK and now we have joined those two datas in a very neat and tidy fashion and we have everything we want. Uh, the one last thing that you might want to do is to go to column in here where census data total is. So here we find that some of these census tracts have uh, perhaps too few people then we don't want to consider them. Certainly we would want to turn off any of the census tract that have no people in them but we can also choose a number of filters we would want uh, greater than or equal to 30 people. So census tracts with a number of people in them. And so that eliminated a few. At this point uh, the one last thing that you may want to do is press uh, control A to select everything, copy it and put it in yet one more new sheet, paste, values, super clean, super neat. That's uh, the last thing that you would need to do and from here you can uh, do all kinds of analyses and visualization on the data. So that's the end of this tutorial. <laughs>